I am so excited to be here right now. I'm at the Fairmont in Dallas at the artist in residence studio of Dan Lamb. She does these incredible sculptural pieces. They're colorful, they're weird, they're beautiful. I just want to touch them or maybe eat them. Anyways, I get to talk to her today and you get to be in on that conversation. These things are engaging, right? They are very colorful, they're very attractive, they're very um, uncommon. And so um, I can totally see why this is popular, but how did you ever get to this? So I was in grad school two years ago, I graduated in 2014. Um, and while I was in school, I presented something to one of my professors in, in a studio visit. And he was like, well, these are really beautiful, but like, so what? So then all the, like that, to me, that kind of sparked like this moment of, like I know my work has content, my professor is seeing my work and saying he thinks it lacks content. Mm -hmm. And so he's kind of qualifying that with, it's beautiful, but, but so what? Yeah. You know, so for me there was this, something interesting there about this idea of something being beautiful and not having, um, I guess, something deeper. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of, I followed that train of thought and I started to like question my own aesthetics and question what is beautiful, what is not beautiful, yeah. um, what happens when you have something that is beautiful but it becomes too much of something. Mm -hmm. um, so basically it, it drove this idea of work that lives between something beautiful and something ugly. Interesting. Um, so that's kind of what drives like my um, decision making. I think naturally I tend to go towards like the beautiful, of course, you know, so like yes. even in making these sometimes I'm like, oh, that's, that's gross. Like a moment like that will happen where it's like, that's gross, but that's a good thing. I yes. Think, you know, so now I'm becoming more and more interested in um, this interactive quality that the work has. Like you mentioned, like people want to touch them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, these things that I've made that kind of are ugly and beautiful, people are still very attracted to them, but to the point where they want to actually engage and interact. They want to experience it with touch yes, and not, exactly. just, not just viewing. Exactly. Yeah. And so I like the idea that someone wants to touch so badly, but they can't because it is in a gallery. Yes. So there's a tension that's created there. Yes. Um, of a desire, but it can't be, that desire can't be met. Yes. So, you know, that's kind of like, that's where my idea started and then that's where they're at kind of right now. And the other half of the equation for me is really materials. Mm -hmm. I'm very um, process based, like a lot of the things I do is just experimenting, um, playing with materials, using materials in ways that aren't um, like their primary objective. Yes. You know, so like, yep. you know, if you look at like all of my work uh, as like a full body from like 10 years ago to now, you can definitely see like there's a relationship between um, the materials I was using and like the, the sort of flowiness, the aesthetics, and I'm still kind of growing and learning with, with those same kind of things. Interesting, so you just finished grad school. Yes. You've got a lot of education behind you. Yeah. How much do you credit school for what you've been able to accomplish? I mean, I think I've always known that I wanted to be an artist. It's always been like a, like I, I say it's a calling. Mm -hmm. um, like I feel it like inside. If I don't make stuff, then it like, it like eats away at me. So it's a very, it's been a very natural path for me. Um, school, it both helped me better myself as an artist. It also, there were some things that hindered me, but I think in that way, they were more like challenges. Like, for example, like that professor saying like, this is beautiful, but so what, right? So that could have been, I think, potentially like a moment where I'm like, oh, like, I don't know, so what? Like It could have crushed you. Yeah, and yeah. it could have turned and it could have gone another way, but yeah. I think what it did was it kind of forced me to um, like stand my ground yes. and also be able to defend my work better. It actually helps to just be able to talk about your work yeah. and have like an environment to do that, which then kind of fosters new ideas. Yeah, there's problem solving that happens through discussion yeah. with other creative yeah. people. And, like, and critique it, was yeah. a big part of that. Yeah. Critique, I think, is probably a major um, benefit of school. Mm -hmm. that I think a lot of times artists that I meet like that maybe haven't had school they're not as used to that critique format mm -hmm. where you know they present their work and I mean it could be ripped apart yeah you just grow a thicker skin because of it um, and you also again learn how to talk about your work or defend your work a little bit better yeah yeah that's so good on that note about language like I find that I think that it is a, a duty of the artist to be able to tell the story of your art yeah. whatever that is like you need to present the viewer with a story around your art 
Um, because oftentimes, I mean, we think in stories, right? We're humans, we, we, are, we live storied lives, and that's how we process a lot of stuff. And so like, you know, maybe it, the story is, I went on vacation, I saw this artwork, it reminded me of going on vacation, that's why I bought it. Like, that's the story. But if, if, there, if, the, if the patron doesn't bring that story to the work, then, you know, you as the artist, you need to give them a story. You need to give them a story and like, tell them why this is valuable or tell them like, how you came up with this or whatever it is to bring story, to create story around the work. I think it really helps people to, um, I don't know, just wrap, wrap narrative around what it is they're being presented with because oftentimes they don't have language to, with which to um, understand it. And so yeah, I do think that language has a lot to do with like, it needs to work in conjunction with, with a visual piece oftentimes, yeah. right? Yeah, I agree. I, I love critique and I hate evaluation. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you feel the same way, but like I love when someone will um, help me by pushing my thoughts in a certain direction that I wasn't able to get there on my own. Right, so they make me, they challenge my thinking. Yeah. And I hate it when, uh, when I was in school and someone would say like, this you know, is a A, or this is a B, yeah. or this is a you know, 75%, like what does that even mean? Right. And who are you to say, right? Because this is art after all. And so as an art teacher, I was always so like, conflicted about that because my job was to evaluate and give report cards. And yet my, um, I felt like my ethical responsibility as an artist and to these kids was to not do that. So there was a lot of conflict there, but one thing that sort of a way that I got around that was I used to say, tell me what you think was a success with your piece Tell me what you would like to do better next time or how would, you know, something that you would like to improve on next time and tell me what surprised you. And so for you, what do you think you do successfully? What would you like to improve on? And then um, what surprises you about your process or what has surprised you over the years? I definitely do think that my work is unique. I have a strong voice. Yes, and, you do. Um, I think that that is probably one of my greater strengths as an artist. As far as the work goes, I think I'm really good with color. And yes. color is like my, it's kind of my jam. Like yeah. I'm like very, very good at color. Yeah, you do it well, um, you do it well. <laughs> I, color theories are really interesting. Like it's always in the back of my mind. And that's why like a lot of my work, when you see like I'm doing all these spikes, it's a very repetitive kind of um, motion and act. Um, it constantly interests me because I'm dealing with color. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, how a pink looks on a blue is gonna look different than how a pink looks on a green or yep. a purple or whatever. So like, I'm, Black I'm or whatever, constantly yeah. like learning still from, from my own process. And I think that answers like, how, what surprises me about my process is, basically I'm not gonna do anything that isn't interesting to me. If it gets boring, then it's, t it's time to move on. Mm -hmm. And so I'm constantly surprised by like the little discoveries I make. Like, you know, if I pair, there's infinite amounts of colors to pair with one another. So I'll like, I'll learn something new by just throwing in a new color. Do you as an artist say to yourself, okay, now like, you know, here's what I want to do better next time. Or like, you know, I want to change this. Or maybe it is just, you know, I'm doing everything well, but um, how do I keep pushing the envelope? Yeah. Or how do I keep challenging myself? Like, but yeah. what do you say about that? Like, how do you, what is your idea about your own self-improvement? I constantly am experimenting with material, so that's like another way I kind of continue to push myself. There are times when things are uncomfortable and I have to kind of evaluate, like, is that discomfort because something's not right? Or is it because I'm not used to it? Yeah. And so if it is something I'm not used to, I like to push that. Yeah, so it's like, I think what you're saying is that you need to know when, to, when something needs to be abandoned. Yes. Or, uh, versus when something needs to be pushed further. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So those moments where like I'm uncomfortable, those are like out of comfort, those are like, you know, comfort zone pushing moments. And I think those are really important in the studio. I think it's really important. Yeah, well, because that's how you grow. Right? right? Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You can't grow unless you challenge yourself. And kids are learning new things all the time and not afraid to go there, not afraid to you know, find out what will be down path A, B, and C. And, and then there's something that happens somewhere along the line. It's like adults think that they don't need to do that. Why, because they have a full-time job? No, like, I honestly think that creativity is the best way to learn, period. Like yeah. to really fully learn and never forget and, um, and have it really like um, shape your mind in new ways, mm -hmm. it's, creativity is the way to go. What do you say to those kids mm -hmm. who are, you know, they are just artistically inclined? Yeah. Maybe they're hearing like the messages about like, ah, oh, you don't want to be a serving artist. What do you say to those kids? I think it's really important to continue to 
be creative. I don't think you should ever stop. I think um, I definitely would encourage kids to just continue making things, even if even if it's not like the career path or like the thing that they're going to continue doing for the rest of their lives as a job, as a primary like money maker. Mm -hmm. um, it's still really important to continue creative endeavors. Mm -hmm. Even if it is just a hobby though, I think like it's important to make the time for it. It's important to give it like your energy and your focus when you're spending time on it. And I think that passion transcends yeah. in the work, right? Yeah. Like if you love yeah. it, then it's almost like a viewer can tell Yes, when they look at your work, right? Like I can tell. The energy's there. Yeah. I am so excited by your work actually, because I just find it so different. And um, and I think, that, I think that I'm really excited by people who are okay to just abandon everything and abandon all like expectation and you know you know your parents wishes for you <laughs> and just say like I am just gonna do it and I'm just gonna trust the creative process and just go with it and see what happens yeah you know and if you do it enough you're gonna come up with something pretty cool right hopefully totally. thank you so much for inviting us into the space I love all of it I'm so happy that we were able to come here and I just wish you all the best. I think your stuff's amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs>